Uh, if you look at the path of that, it, it may have, the worst of that tornado may have passed a little bit west of uh, New Boston. Now, obviously, that's not good for the folks that live a little bit west of New Boston, but given the more dense, you know, a little bit higher density population of New Boston yeah, itself. that would have gone right between Malta and New Boston, yeah. so you're seeing some of the debris from what yeah. was picked up right between those two locations. Exactly, and uh, the fact that it missed, perhaps, New Boston means that it's not as bad as it could have been, but keep in mind, you can kind of see where this is going to be going as you wait for that to come in, up towards Lean, uh, Wilton, and probably midway between Foreman and Ashdown. This is our tornado right here. We're looking at debris uh, I think that is being picked up. Go looks ahead. Looks like Josh. it's probably picked up a lot of debris, just uh, just based on the size of it. And go ahead. We mentioned this before, Josh. Uh, how high is that debris? Obviously, we're not talking about debris. Uh, that one's about. Uh, so the one in McCurtain County was at about ten thousand yes. feet. That's at about fifty six hundred. Okay. So it goes to show you, as you get closer to the Shreveport radar site, it gets a little easier for us to see these debris signatures. Yes. And uh, again. Why the difference? Well, the McCurtain County storm was farther away. The radar beam is straight, earth curves, and obviously in McCurtain County, it hits the uh, storm much higher up. Uh, so that's the reason why uh, it, uh, it's 5,600 here, but as it was in uh, southern uh, McCurtain County, it was closer to 10,000. Uh, so the, the fact that we are uh, still seeing this uh, rather impressive debris uh, signature uh, is the fact that we do, and has been confirmed, and, uh, have a strong uh, tornado that is currently Yeah, we have place. another tornado warning uh, that does include another portion of Rust County, so I may uh, just want to go down there. Storms are not in Rust County just yet, but the uh, first of those warnings, the one that's near New Salem, uh, as well as Pleasant Grove, that storm will be moving close to those uh, communities probably within the next five to ten minutes or so. Uh, so I wanted to give in. You can see the new warning pop up for the yes. storm just south of it as well. These storms did have tornado warnings earlier, I believe, uh, and then just have kind of recycled and started to strengthen once again. So we'll keep an eye on those as well. So this one here, which is uh, west of New Salem, that is the cell, if you look at the motion of it, that could up, head up towards Henderson. And just a quick measurement on that, grab where it is right now. Uh, and assuming it's going at about a half hour, so about 8.15, we could see this move uh, very close to the Henderson, Texas area. And again, this one, assuming the same thing, the same uh, motion, uh, and let's go an hour out. Let's go out, let's go out a couple hours. So this, uh, you know, about an hour, more than an hour, could move into the western sections of uh, Panola County. All right, so, and then after that, you know, we're starting to talk about up in northwest Louisiana. So the cells that are, we don't want to see uh, these cells further to the south. For, if you're watching in east Texas, northwest Louisiana, you don't like seeing these warnings starting to pop up further to the south because this is the activity if it does continue to uh, increase in intensity, that will eventually uh, move into northwest Louisiana and uh, perhaps into Shreveport and Bossier City. Uh, and we are starting to see these uh, rotate somewhat uh, as they do so. So these eventually could move into especially the northern sections of Caddo and Bossier parishes, but we're still a ways out from that uh, from that happening. Again, still, as Josh mentioned, outside of our viewing area, but they will be moving into Rust County uh, here fairly uh, shortly. Update uh, on McCurtain County, since it's been one of the hardest hit parts of the Oracle text, you can see uh, we do still have some pretty good rain in Idabel. Again, we did likely have a strong tornado move through Idabel earlier. A tornado emergency was issued something that's very rare, uh, and we have reports from Ida Bell of houses being destroyed. No word uh, yet on any deaths or injuries uh, out of Ida Bell as of yet. We have had another tornado that has passed very close to New Boston, and uh, that is getting ready to cross the Red River and move into Little River County uh, there in uh, southwest Arkansas. Again, this one, uh, you can see the debris ball signature as it passed very close to New Boston, maybe a little bit to the west of town. It is right now, right over the Red River, very close to where Highway 8 uh, crosses and becomes, I believe, 41 uh, there in uh, Little River County. And again, Aline could be the uh, spot in 
uh, Little River County that gets the direct hit from this. And uh, just kind of watching the weather cameras as well. Next time we're waiting for data, you may want to cycle through those. But you can see the rain is just sheeting down in decab right now, just blinding oh, yeah. rain there. And in Texarkana, you can see the, uh, the sky is just lit up there. So you're already probably seeing the lightning, hearing the thunder there as those uh, storms will be approaching Texarkana shortly as well. Thanks for uh, checking out jo checking it out, Josh. In fact, I can show you all five at once. You'll see the various, uh, uh, what's happening around the area. Again, you can see the rain that Josh is mentioning with the frequent lightning uh, there in the cab. Let me clean that off. Uh, all is quiet still in Marshall as well as in Shreveport. Uh, and, and it's going to be a while for Cachata. And in Texarkana, we'll see if we can see that lightning off. There it goes. There is the lightning off the dis distance in Texarkana. But uh, again, this is a, a view from the uh, Bowie County equipment camera there in uh, Indy Cab, right there on Highway 82. And you kind of see the picture there, uh, and you can kind of see, I'm going to switch this back to the radar and uh, show you what uh, you just looked at. Again, uh, what we're seeing, what we just saw uh, is uh, this very heavy rain here in uh, DeKalb, uh, Texas, which is uh, currently not severe. Uh, at the present time, but again, some very heavy rain. And, uh, now picking up, have a very strong debris signature on the storm that is going in Cass County. It's going to be headed up towards, uh, it's over Midway right now and headed up towards Douglasville. Uh, very strong, seeing very strong rotation on that one. Also a debris signature now as well. All right, thanks for uh, keeping an eye on that, Josh. All right, so we're talking about this cell right here near Midway. Let me pause this. So here we have, Red away, green towards, you can see the cylinder, and that is an indication of strong shear in the atmosphere. And This is where our tornado is. Let's see how that matches up. And that's, uh, we have two circulations. You can see the one at the bottom of the screen as well. So we have two distinct circulations. Uh, both of those have may have had uh, some kind of tornado debris signature. Yeah. So both of those storms moving through the warned area, typically we're just watching one storm go through a tornado warned area, but we actually have two here, yeah. one of those right over Midway, and then another one uh, that's back towards Avenger, which may make its way uh, maybe closer to Linden, but it looks to be in more of a rural part uh, of the county. So it looks like this uh, debris signature is cross Crossroads Community uh, Century is what it pops up on the map. And again, that probably will head up uh, a little bit uh, west of uh, Carterville, a little bit uh, west of Almira, and uh, uh, probably a bit to the uh, east of Marietta and very close to Douglasville. And again, this is uh, uh, the area of where we likely have some debris and yeah. kind of show you that. And that would blast. be the storm for Texarkana to keep an eye on. Yes, and you can kind of see that. Uh, in fact, let me do what I did earlier, kind of show this in 3D and uh, take this a view from behind the storm and put this in the motion and uh, you can kind of see these cylinders march along and where uh, these are going to be going. So uh, you can kind of see that uh, this is the storm that moved up against Sims to New Boston. Uh, you can kind of see the storms definitely headed up Douglasville and eventually up towards uh, Texarkana as we uh, look, you kind of think of it as looking through the windshield of these uh, uh, thunderstorms, if you don't mind the uh, driving analogy and where they are uh, currently headed here across uh, across the Arkletex. So again, uh, Texarkana, keep an eye on these storms here in Cass County, the one near Avenger as well as the one that's very close to Midway. Again, these cylinders pop on when there's strong rotation. And typically when we have these cylinders, we found out over the years that we eventually have a confirmation that something has uh, uh, touched the ground. So that's the latest on those two areas. Let's zero back in on the uh, storm that is right now in uh, moving into Little River County. And uh, you can see our tornado here, which has just crossed the Red River and is uh, moving into Little River County. We had a pretty good debris signature near Sims, near New Boston. Looks like that perhaps has faded somewhat. Now, that could be a good sign. Uh, and let's take a look at the uh, velocity uh, scan of the radar here and still have the rotation. Let me uh, stop this and kind of pinpoint things on where this is uh, currently located. So we have, uh, we have, this is Highway 41. It gets eight, becomes Arkansas 41. And we do have our 
a tornado here, which is near Anderson Road, near Mudline Road. <clears throat> so pretty close to the intersection of uh, Anderson Road and Mudline Road is where this uh, tornado is going to be going. It will continue to move up towards Pancock and then up towards Aline. So uh, if you live anywhere near Aline uh, and uh, anywhere here along uh, County Highway 1453 between 32 and 108, uh, you're going to be in line for this tornado again. Looks Con like we would have the Wallace community, Wade's Chapel, as well as Arden. That would be in line to see this next. All right. Thanks, Josh. So those are the, the areas on this one, uh, which is uh, just now moving into uh, Little River County. If you're watching in Ashdown, here you are. Again, uh, this is, uh, if you travel down 32 towards Foreman, this will cross 32 closer to Foreman than it will Ashdown. That doesn't necessarily mean you won't get any bad weather. It just means that this uh, tornado likely will pass uh, a bit to your east, up towards Aline, and eventually here, in uh, further downstream, you can see it will pass uh, from Aline and uh, will come very close to uh, uh, basically Locksburg could come into play too. And uh, if we project this even further, here's Nashville that probably will stay north of Nashville. Doesn't mean you're safe. And, uh, Obviously, we've got more stuff further to the south. But again, Dirks may be in line. Uh, for this one. Just wanted to point out, since these have a history here tonight of lasting a long time, we want to take you out further on, uh, as to uh, areas where they could eventually head uh, so that you uh, can be attentive to uh, any warnings that may uh, come your way. And uh, I know our newsroom's efforting to find some information out about the, some of the damage. So they've been making some calls in Idabel. The damage is very widespread, apparently. They are asking uh, everyone, a lot of folks I know want to probably go help. They're asking everybody to stay away from Idabel, especially the east side of town. The east side of town of Idabel, again, uh, newsroom finding out that, uh, again, Josh is mentioning that uh, widespread damage in Idabel. We did have a tornado emergency uh, issue there. Uh, we had an observation from an actual weather station of a gust in excess of 100 miles per hour. Uh, so, again, that kind of is not surprising that we have the widespread damage uh, there in Idabel. Fortunately, that storm has moved out of our area, and we still have plenty more to, to track here. You can see this uh, uh, one in Cass County. This uh, one is, go ahead, Josh. And uh, also uh, one of our former interns, uh, Jake Jacob, uh, who's our chief meteorologist yes. over at our sister station, his uh, dad is a DPS trooper there, saying there's damage in the Hughes Springs area okay. uh, of there. So we know, we, likely, we saw the debris signature with that, but we yeah. know that that is definitely causing some damage as well. All right, so that would be associated with this tornado here. And let me kind of pinpoint exactly where this is uh, currently located. Here's Bethlehem. I'm trying to get some of these uh, roads to pop on. But you can see the Beth Bethlehem community, Cassetta, uh, and uh, a little bit uh, north and uh, west of Almira. Uh, it is going to cross uh, Highway 77, uh, very close to maybe a little bit to the west of Douglasville. So if you live uh, anywhere between Douglasville and Marietta, especially closer to Douglasville, uh, all the way to Marietta, you need in your, to be in your place of safety, small room, middle of your house, take that pillow or cushion to protect you uh, from any flying debris that you uh, may have. And uh, uh, I suspect, again, as Josh mentioned, we have uh, confirmation of some damage uh, there in the Hughes Springs uh, part of uh, of Cass County as well, and that is going to pass up towards Douglasville, and eventually we'll see that, notice where the arrow's pointing, pass very close to Texarkana. And as far as the timing of that, we're kind of pointing out close to nine o'clock, if memory serves me correctly. So it's about three quarters of an hour away. <clears throat> so about 8.45, maybe a little bit before that, uh, we'll see this begin to impact, especially the southwestern sections of uh, Texarkana. So this one, is one to watch uh, for you folks there in the uh, Texarkana area. And we do have another one uh, which uh, is indicated here, a, a cylinder with one that is west of Linden. Let's see if I could switch over 
change views if anything changes on that. Clearly a stronger circulation with this storm, which is southeast of Marietta, as opposed to uh, the one, that cylinder that's further to the south. See if we see any debris. It's indicated it looks like we could have some. This very well could be uh, a signature associated with that uh, rotation. So this could be uh, some sort of confirmation, although uh, you can see the box here is still red. There's nothing official as far as a confirmation with this as of yet. But as with every tornado warning, you should act as if uh, there is something on the ground. Uh, again, our uh, Little River County storm, this is the current location of our uh, tornado here near Cannon Road, Anderson Road, and the intersection of Mudline Road, Wallace, Pankoff, Arden, and eventually up towards Aline are locations and where this is going to be going. You can see where we have our signature here, which could be debris, and how that matches up with the uh, velocity scan. Again, it can uh, be delayed somewhat compared to when we get the two sets of data, but you can kind of clearly see that uh, our tornado here is soon going to cross uh, Arkansas Highway 32 uh, there near Wallace, and this is uh, Winthrop Road. Uh, so that kind of gives you a sense on the exact location of our tornado there uh, in the western sections of, uh, of Little River County. And again, if you're watching in Foreman, uh, it's moving towards the northeast, <coughs> more towards the uh, east towards Aline is where this is going to be going. And then uh, further downstream, you can see it. You folks in Locksburg watch this very, very closely. And you folks in Dirks also need to keep an eye on this storm, uh, which has a history of producing, uh, again, uh, quite a bit of debris as it passed near New Boston uh, several minutes ago. Uh, let's take you back down to the south here into, the, uh, into Russ County. It doesn't look like these uh, cells here, Josh, are quite as... Uh, so with this southern one, if you uh, go back over to the velocity mode, you can see that one's definitely rotating or spinning pretty hard. So I believe that's probably turning into the more dominant one. The other circulation we're watching is now crossed into the county. It's near Pleasant Grove. It is moving up Highway 79 oh. towards Henderson. That would be that northern yeah. warning there. Uh, but the stronger one looks to be the one that is uh, to the south. I was on the wrong storm. That's why I didn't. I thought I was all the way down south. But here, here you go. This, these are the two cells that uh, we're looking at just now entering uh, Russ County, and then we have another one that will follow suit. Uh, that could move uh, close to Mount Enterprise, and memory serves me, uh, we did have uh, one in the spring that moved fairly close to uh, Mount Enterprise. And again, these, if you project them northward, could, uh, we could see Cattle Bozier Parish come into play. We project that northeast, could see this. Uh, these would be the ones that we would need to keep an eye on. Uh, if you're watching here in uh, Shreveport, Bossier City, especially the southernmost uh, cell uh, as it moves forward. All right, let me zoom this out, and I haven't shown a future scan in a while. We'll show you where these storms uh, could be going here in the next hour. So I'm going to kind of put this in the motion and kind of go down the, down the line here. So you can see the cell that's now down here moves up towards Dirks in the next hour. We have uh, the cell here, which is uh, warned in uh, Cass County. You can see that projected to move close to Texarkana and then up towards Fulton by the time we get to close to, uh, uh, close to 9 o'clock here, if that is uh, correct. Uh, but nonetheless, it kind of gives you an idea of when things are going to go downhill. 8.45, 9 o'clock is when that's going to take place uh, there in Texarkana. And you can see in Marshall, probably we'll see some thunderstorms down towards Henderson. Move into the Marshall area shortly before 9 o'clock tonight. And uh, further to the south, uh, again, we're talking about these storms uh, that are currently moving into Russ County. Again, those would eventually, probably a couple hours from now, uh, closer to 10 o'clock, perhaps move into the northern sections of uh, Cattle Parish. Again, this is a one-hour potential look at what we could be seeing here uh, as far as the radar in the uh, next hour. Let me uh, clean this off and uh, zero back. And uh, we kind of touched on this earlier. I want to take a look at the national radar and we'll kind of give you a look as we wait for more uh, data to come in here, kind of give you another look at the overall view of things. Again, we have the discrete storms. These are the ones that have been spinning uh, over the last several hours. 
especially over the northwestern sections of the Oracle text. You can see the line of storms here. Uh, this was projected to be probably our biggest concern further to the south and east. So far, it really hasn't produced much, and uh, that could be a good sign. Let's see what is showing up with the uh, HR, the HRRR model. This is a high-resolution rapid refresh. High, rapid refresh, we get a run of this every hour, so we'll move this forward uh, to 9 o'clock. You can see it does show the rain in Texarkana. Uh, again, some rain possible in Shreveport. Notice that everything moves into northwest Louisiana, southern Arkansas by 11. Still some intensity indicated, so the fact that... Uh, we're not seeing much there yet, you know, doesn't mean that it can't develop. But nonetheless, by the time we get past midnight, we should see conditions improve over the eastern uh, sections of the Oracle text here uh, later on tonight. So go back to pinpoint Doppler here. You can see in this overall view uh, the numerous warnings that are currently in place. Again, the orange boxes, those are severe thunderstorm warnings, red boxes, tornado warnings, purple boxes, confirmed tornado warnings. In other words, a warning where we know that there is a tornado located within it, and you can see a few of those are impacting uh, the Arkletex as we speak. So let's go down the line here, uh, stop the radar, and show you where we're looking at the uh, latest location of these uh, thunderstorms so, uh, and tornadoes, uh, so to speak. So you can see this cell, uh, which is, uh, again, we've been kind of telling you about a lean and you can see I'm going to zero this in. It looks like it is now uh, just about ready to cross uh, Arkansas Highway 108, uh, very close to Aline, maybe a couple miles west of town. So that is the current location. And uh, this will eventually perhaps get very close to Locksburg. So if you live in Locksburg, you're the next larger community to be impacted uh, by this uh, uh, tornado, which is again moving uh, very close to Aline uh, as we speak. And then uh, <clears throat> further to the south, we have this uh, additional thunderstorm here. This is a, a tornado which is uh, close to Douglasville. Let me see if we're looking at anything as far as debris with uh, this one. We did have a pretty good signature, it looks like. It does kind of match up, so we probably do have some debris uh, with this uh, just to the west of uh, Douglasville. This is the cell which could eventually move up. Notice where the arrows take it. So this is one, if, if you know someone who's on Wright-Patman, uh, I know there's probably some places along Highway 8 that is about ready to be impacted by this uh, tornado. Uh, Redwater, keep an eye on it. Uh, this is the spillway of uh, Wright-Patman right here, and it could pass uh, over this part of uh, Wright-Patman and you can see it could eventually move into the uh, Texarkana area. And uh, I believe it will. So if, especially if you're on the Bowie County side of Texarkana, exactly. this will be close to you. Uh, just plotted it out. It's going about 43, so 45 okay. miles per hour. Uh, so that's going to put it near Redwater at 823, Redlick at 834, Nash at 835, Wake Village at 835, Texarkana 838. Again, these are just approximate times, but yeah. you get the idea that this will be uh, up to you in about 30 minutes or so. All right, and, and let's take that out farther, Josh. Uh, given the fact that these things are lasting forever tonight, I'll let, let this zoom out. And uh, you said 43? Yeah, that was, uh, I just timed it out just to see how quickly that one was moving, 43. And they've all kind of been in that 45 mile an hour yeah. range today, so we haven't seen them speed up or slow down. So I think it's, it's still so okay this, to go 45. This is uh, an hour from now, so about 9 o'clock in Fulton. Uh, Josh mentioned eight, you know, between 8.30, 8.45 for Texarkana, depending on what part of the city. Uh, if we take this, uh, project this out even farther, uh, this is, so let's go an hour and a half. So that would be about there. Uh, up towards Blevins in an hour and a half. So that's 9.30-ish. Uh, then it moves out by 10 o'clock, maybe headed up towards D-Light, Arkansas after that. So uh, this is where that tornado could be going if you project this forward. And again, uh, last half hour, basically last 15 minutes, uh, uh, about 8.45, maybe a little bit before that for uh, the Texarkana area. And then we have another one down here, which is uh, near Linden, uh, that is uh, also going to move very close to uh, Texarkana and probably a little bit south of town. Let's see how that shapes up on the radar. That doesn't look 
to be too impressive at this point, uh, but nonetheless, there is that cylinder there, which is always uh, always concerning. Uh, but this uh, part of the cell will eventually move uh, south of Texarkana up towards Genoa, probably within the same uh, time frame. Uh, we believe it's on the ground near Douglasville, crossing yeah. Highway 77. That would be this cell right here, crossing uh, near Douglasville. So. That goes with the uh, debris signature that I showed you and then tracked up towards uh, Texarkana. It's crossed Highway 77. In fact, let me uh, zoom this, do a, a straight up view of this, and then uh, call up the debris ball signature or yeah, the debris it be, detection. It would be going right yeah. up Highway 8 right now, right, yes. right to the lake. Yep, straight. Here's Highway 8, and it's going to go probably parallel to this uh, line and then move right over the northwest half of Wright-Patman and probably near or I know that there are a couple of campgrounds there. I've camped at a couple of them there, uh, there on Wright-Patman. So if you live in, uh, if you're at that location, uh, go to a, a shelter uh, if you possibly can. One of the bathrooms there if, you, if you're still there because you don't want to be in any, uh, a camp or anything like that, obviously. Uh, so again, this is uh, moving up towards Wright-Patman and again, we will eventually see this, as Josh mentioned, uh, probably move on the Texas side of uh, Texarkana here uh, sometime uh, between, say, 835, 845. And I'm, I'm, I'm still watching Rust County, so folks there that are tuned in, um, we would definitely say something if I saw anything debris pop up. Uh, still yeah, seeing that see circulation either. approaching Henderson. Uh, there is a tornado warning on that. Henderson's right on the line where that tornado warning ends. Nothing concerning in that northern storm, but you probably yeah. still want to stay inside and kind of wait this one out. It's the southern storm there yeah. uh, where you see Clearly. the red and the green. That's definitely the stronger one that will likely be crossing just south of Henderson another 20 to 30 minutes from now but I am watching those okay thanks Josh and again you can see the difference between the two uh, this is the one that's headed towards uh, Henderson as Josh mentioned uh, just be safe uh, don't let your guard down uh, you can kind of clearly see and you can see as I begin talking we have uh, this uh, one of these spinning cylinders indicating the presence or at least possible presence of a tornado and a very clear uh, signature there and that is probably going to pass uh, on off towards the north and east, maybe up towards Minden, and uh, eventually up towards Beckville uh, could be uh, a location of this one. And if you project that forward, again, uh, forward northern half of Caddo and Bossier Parish. So if you live close to Shreveport, this is the one you need to watch. And uh, as of right now, it may pass a little bit north of Shreveport, and uh, you notice that we don't really have anything further to the south, with, which bodes well, at least for now, uh, for the shreveport Bossier uh, metropolitan area. And again, it looks like it's going to be for us uh, a little bit later. We're a couple hours away from seeing uh, anything significant as far as uh, Shreveport and uh, Bossier City is concerned. Let's uh, take a look. It's been a while since I've done this. Uh, take a look at the cameras once again across the Arklatex and show you the uh, all five at the same time, turn off the banner here, and you can see it's still quite martial. Uh, again, we do have, the, this is pointed to the north and west. I wouldn't be shocked if we didn't see a little bit of lightning. There you go, uh, there in, uh, in Marshall. Uh, we had the heavy rain earlier in DeKalb. It looks like conditions have improved there. The visibility has gone up some. Uh, you probably noticed there's the lightning in Texarkana. This may be a camera to watch here, Josh, as uh, that storm that's now near Wright-Patman. Yeah, I was, uh, I'll keep an eye on yeah. that one. The lightning has been continuous and for about the last 20 to 30 minutes. If you, if you Feel free to move it, too, if, if you need to. Okay. Uh, and uh, Cachada, obviously, southeast part of the Arklatex, uh, ways away from getting uh, any impact from these uh, thunderstorms. Okay, so we have uh, the storms. We have this confirmed tornado warning. That's outside of the Arklatex. We have uh, this uh, tornado warning. Notice that it's red. Since That basically means that since this warning was issued, uh, there has not been uh, basically any uh, confirmation of a tornado on the ground. But uh, nonetheless, we do still have a strong signature indicated with this, uh, which is now crossing. This is the little river right here. This is going to be crossing into... Uh, uh, southern uh, Sevier County, and as I mentioned earlier, looks like it's going to come very close to uh, Locksburg. And I don't think 
that we have uh, a signature uh, with this uh, and uh, of debris. Let's see, it's getting a little bit farther away from the radar, <clears throat> so that's not really too uh, surprising. But uh, ah, there you go. You can see there is confirmation. I say that, and we do have confirmation of something on the ground here with uh, uh, with that particular uh, thunderstorm. And just looking to see. Okay. Yeah, and there, uh, that one looks like it's about 7,500 feet up. That's how high it is with radar. And we did see debris in Idabel at 10,000 feet. Yeah. We know that was likely a strong tornado. So That's true. not sure if there's anything still there, but uh, it's definitely still showing those signs of rotating. And, and you can see that our a new tornado warning has just been issued, and it is a confirmed tornado warning. So uh, places which are in line uh, with this one, let me see if I can uh, get the uh, a better location uh, and it's getting far enough away. So we're looking right about in here, very close to maybe a little bit to the west of uh, Ben Loman. Uh, so see if we have any other roadways here that pop on. So here's Oak Grove. There's Penny's, Arkansas, right along Highway 71. That could take a uh, direct hit from this. Could come close to Oak Grove. Here, here's Milford to Bellevue. Uh, let's see if any other roads. So there's Red, Col Red Colony Road. Uh, as it uh, uh, meets up with that road between uh, Millwood and uh, Bellevue. And then it uh, continues to move into the uh, middle part of uh, Howard County. And I mentioned Dirks. Uh, Dirks uh, will also need, is under this uh, tornado warning as well. It very well, very well could see this come very close to yeah, Dirks. It will be very close to Dirks. Yeah, and uh, so a quick plot here. So it's about a half hour about a half hour away from Dirk, so a little bit after 8.30, let's say 8.30, 8.45 or so, somewhere in that 15-minute range, you'll see this uh, move uh, very close to the uh, Dirk's Arkansas area as it uh, races off towards the uh, north and uh, north and east. So strong rotation there. Let's move the radar down to the south. It looks like our uh, storm here in... Uh, in uh, Southern Bowie County, it doesn't look quite as impressive as it did. So it's we're watching, yeah, it looks yeah. like they've kind of merged. So yeah. hopefully that's taken some of the power out of it. But yeah. we see these sometimes cycle back up. So folks uh, anywhere from Hooks to Texarkana, Nash, Wake Village, we're keeping an eye on this one just to see if it circle, cycles back up. But there. right now it looks like uh, the circulation, the debris ball that we had earlier has gone away, which is a good sign for now. But that's that doesn't true. mean these can't spin right back up. That's true. And so, uh, again, I just uh, I clicked on that orange arrow, which showed us the time. Let me see if I can click on this one here. Uh, kind of gives us the time of when this activity will arrive at different locations. And uh, Josh mentioned 838 earlier. I think it's going to be in that uh, 830, 840 range for, uh, for the Texarkana area. It really depends on which part of the town, of, uh, town that you live. Uh, but again, we have seen a little bit of a weakening trend uh, with these storms here in uh, Cass County. Uh, with uh, their movement towards the uh, northeast at around 45. So, again, the storms, uh, the rain, just about ready to move into uh, Texarkana, but uh, the, the actual storms themselves are off well to the south and west. A nice light tonight. It's really, really haven't shown the traditional radar uh, that much, but you can see the heavy rain also going to be an issue with this activity. Here is the storm, which is moving up, uh, crossing into Sevier County, We'll come fairly close to Ben Loman, also close to uh, uh, Dirks there in southwest Arkansas. We have this cell here, which is going to eventually get close to Texarkana, just now crossing uh, into uh, Bowie County near Wright-Patman. And uh, further to the south, the activity near Lake of the Pines uh, and moving into western uh, Harrison County is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, currently not severe. Uh, that's an interesting a little uh, echo there, there near south of Gilmer. I don't know if you're seeing anything. Yeah, that, so I've Josh. been watching those too. Yeah. Uh, it's got a little weak echo region on the one in Gilmer. Yeah. And so all the storms that have before they've gone tornado warned have yeah. kind of showed that weak echo region. You can see there's a little donut hole in that storm that's south of Gilmer. Uh, usually yeah. an indication we're seeing some pretty rapid circulation with that. But these storms have all kind of done the same thing tonight. So uh, would not be shocking at all to maybe see these get warned at some point. Yeah. And so you can see uh, this is the uh, 
the tornado warned cell that uh, south of Henderson that didn't really look uh, too particularly impressive the last time uh, we looked at it, and you can still see that it is uh, fairly weak at the present time. Uh, compare that to what's happening further to the south, and you can see uh, again a little stronger rotation here, a little bit to the uh, east of New Salem. Uh, that is going to move uh, between Minden and Henderson and eventually could uh, up towards Tatum, Beckville could be uh, communities that could be in line for this thunderstorm. And then if it continues that track, eventually we could be looking at it moving into the northern sections of uh, Caddo and Bossier uh, parishes. Uh, looks like a new tornado warning. Uh, that's for the one that, was, that I just mentioned there in uh, Russ County, uh, new tornado warning, actually an extension of the previous one. Technically does include Carthage, but we'll probably see this pass in terms of the rotation. Now keep in mind with these tornado warnings, <coughs> we focus uh, so much on the, the rotation that uh, we often don't talk about the straight line winds very much, so that is uh, uh, also going to be a concern with these thunderstorms as well as they uh, move uh, through these particular areas. So again, the rotation itself probably will stay uh, to the west and northwest of uh, Carthage, but we will keep an eye on that as well as it does. Uh, again, this new tornado warning is in effect until 9 p.m. this evening uh, for uh, parts of Rusk as well as for parts of uh, Panola counties. We do have, uh, again, the tornado warning that has just been issued further to the north and west. This one uh, for parts of Eastern Bowie, Northern Miller, Southern uh, Little River County. That's in effect until 9 p.m. Uh, this evening. That is for this uh, uh, thunderstorm here, which is, uh, again, right about in here. It looks like it's a little bit south of uh, Maud. Uh, I should say west of Maud. See if we can get Redwater to pop on and very close to Redwater. So it's crossing uh, very close to uh, the northern sections of, of uh, right Patman right now. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, the east side of, or west side, I should say, the Texas side of Texarkana is where this could eventually <clears throat> end up going as it moves. And yeah, I believe this is headed right towards Nash, right between uh, Red Lake Nash and Texarkana. Yeah, and then we have this secondary circulation, which is uh, further to the south and west, a little bit to the west of Atlanta, <coughs> excuse me, and Queen City. Uh, that is going to slide up towards uh, Genoa. So all of this is going to bring quite a bit of wind uh, to the Texarkana area, and again, uh, this activity, as Josh mentioned, probably west of town uh, as it moves towards uh, Nash, Red Look, and that part of uh, Bowie County, and probably will stay a little bit to the east of uh, Hooks, Texas, if you're watching in that uh, part of the Oracle, Texas. It looks like this is very close to uh, Redwater, Texas uh, right now uh, as, we, as we speak. And again, uh, just another quick update. We do have this uh, tornado, which is now north of Ben Lomond. Uh, here's Locksburg, uh, so it looks like this is going to pass a little bit to the south and east of Locksburg, and eventually, uh, see if I can put this in the motion here to kind of show us exactly uh, how this is headed. So you can see where it has been and where it's going. So it looks like this is going to come close to Dirks, maybe a little bit south and east of town. Yeah. If you're in Dirks, be in your place of safety, center point. Center Anywhere point. in that. Go yeah. ahead, Josh. I would say more towards center point, maybe. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. South end, uh, uh, you can see down towards probably somewhere in this area uh, is what we're looking at. It's crossing, uh, I believe that is, I was going to say 371, but obviously I'm wrong. 278. I knew it was a three letter uh, road number. But anyway, that's where it's going. We'll soon cross 371 here, uh, probably uh, uh, very close to the Little River. I believe is where that is. That's not the Little River. I don't know what that is that feeds. Uh, but anyway, uh, that is where that is going up towards Dirk, Center Point, and the middle part of uh, Howard County. And notice that this uh, warning is flashing purple. That tells you that this is confirmed. We do have confirmation uh, since this warning has been issued of something on the ground. And uh, being this far away from the radar, uh, to have a signature that is this uh, defined, if you will, and obvious, uh, tells you that the chances are good that we still have something 
on the ground with that uh, particular storm. Uh, you can kind of see, as I have this in motion, you can kind of see, uh, notice the how that rotation here, you can kind of see how it becomes less defined, very strong. This is where we have, I believe, the debris ball uh, and how that has gone away uh, as it has moved up towards Wright Patman. Uh, much harder to, to uh, tell exactly where that is, more than likely uh, passing uh, very close to Redwater there along U.S. Highway. Yeah, right between uh, near Maud and Redwater. Yeah, is where that it looks like it's going. And, uh, and it is really weakened, so hopefully yeah. it continues to do that. Yeah. Uh, Texas County, you're in the warning right now, but again, we're not seeing that debris or the circulation that we saw earlier when there was uh, some damage further to your southwest. Um, and you can clearly see that, Josh. Watch right here. You mentioned the weakening, how distinct that red and green were, and try to find it now. It's right about yeah. here, so it, and, it's clearly And sometimes those, those tornadoes, uh, you know, the circulation may die out, but a lot of the wind from the top of the storm, if you yeah. will, will get pulled down to the ground. So uh, you can still get some damaging straight-line winds with these that are in excess of 60 miles per hour, and that's definitely enough to do, do some damage as well. And let's uh, take a look at the camera, and it, you can see the rain has begun there in uh, Texarkana. Uh, just a look. <clears throat> Doesn't look like it's very windy there as of yet, uh, but we'll uh, keep an eye on that camera, and we'll probably see a little bit more motion in these uh, flags and the trees as the storms from those, uh, the, the brunt of those storms, which are now uh, to the south of Texarkana, make their way, <coughs> excuse me, into that uh, part of the Oracle Tex here uh, moving forward. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. I'm gonna let Josh. Let's say give you a I little. Need I need, my voice needs a rest for a second. Give you a little bit of a break here. Yeah, uh, the so. newsroom's been calling around. We're going to be joined by uh, Dan Jovic here in a moment just to give us an update on some of the damage that we've had uh, across the Arkeltex. He's been making calls, so he'll be able to give us uh, an update on that. But I uh, just wanted to start with the storm up to the north here, uh, and then we'll continue to move to the south. Again, this uh, storm is uh, crossing into Howard County. We believe this will probably be headed up towards Dirks as well as Center Point. So that uh, we're still seeing the circulation with that one's, I think very well could still have uh, maybe a tornado on the ground there. Uh, Texarkana, if your cell phones have been going off for the tornado warning, uh, both sides of Texarkana, both Bowie as well as Miller County, uh, that rotation is weakened. I think this is going to be more of a straight line wind threat uh, for the next 20 to 30 minutes or so. But I uh, mentioned a little bit earlier, sometimes these storms will cycle and then spin back up. So that will ha have to be something we have to watch. So if you're in Texarkana, Nash, uh, Leary, Texas, uh, in over towards Genoa, you're in that warning right now. Just be close to your place of safety in case uh, you do need to go back in there. Uh, also seeing a little bit of a rotation here on radar. We've been kind of watching this portion of the storm for the last hour. This is very close to Queen City as well as Atlanta. Uh, and you can see a little marker there on radar indicating there may be some circulation, but there's nothing with that that would uh, cause us any kind of concern right now. And uh, further to the south, also the uh, tornado worn storm. So again, we're watching three tornado worn storms at the moment here and you can see uh, just on radar you see where the greens and reds come together that's looking from the Shreveport radar side so the green uh, is the wind blowing the rain back towards Shreveport and the red is the uh, rain being blown away from the Shreveport so we know there is some circulation there uh, but nothing that would indicate uh, that we have anything that is on the ground or anything as far as debris but this storm uh, again is going to be headed up between Henderson as well as Long Branch uh, and then up towards Tatum as well as Beck and this warning goes until uh, looks like nine o'clock. So it would be between 845 and nine o'clock that this eventual circulation uh, would be up towards Tatum and Beckville. But I believe this is the storm here to kind of keep an eye on for the next 30 to 45 minutes. This one's still showing uh, some very strong signs of rotation as well. We do have a few storms here that are currently not carrying any warnings with them. Uh, but you can see the little storm here near Longview kind of exhibiting that little hook that these other storms have exhibited before they They've uh, become tornado warned as well. This will be moving to the northeast. So this too will be uh, headed up towards Marion County and into Cass County. So uh, in Atlanta, we have that storm that's moving through right now, likely not uh, producing a tornado, but we're still watching some of these storms to your southwest. Uh, and again, Texarkana beginning to see some of the heavier rainfall there at the moment, uh, but we're still not seeing anything as far as the rotation trying to trying to strengthen back. But uh, you may notice uh, where those greens and reds 
do come together here that uh, potentially we're maybe seeing this storm trying to tighten back up there uh, just over Highway 67. So again, this would be the uh, portion of the storm that is headed into Nash as well as uh, the Texarkana area here. And it may try to cycle back up. So I would urge folks there in uh, Nash and Texarkana just to be in your place of safety, to be on the same side. Again, we're not seeing that same kind of debris on radar that we did earlier, but uh, still possible that we do see a tornado uh, maybe spin up here and you can see in Texarkana, you'll get this circulation that moves by, and we still have some rain back to the west. So we are uh, likely looking at some heavy rain, also maybe some hail in the Texarkana area for at least the next hour or so. Uh, and those would be the three storms here that we are kind of watching uh, as far as the tornado warning. And again, the flashing purple box there indicating confirmed tornado uh, with the storm moving up into Howard County. That's the one that has uh, the history producing some damage back there in uh, northeast Texas. And you can definitely see still see on radar uh, that we are seeing some indications that the wind is still trying to rotate there. So uh, the storm will be headed up towards uh, Dirks as well as Center Point, even if there's not a tornado there, uh, still likely looking, looking at uh, some very high winds uh, across the region here. I believe we do have uh, Dan here on the news desk. Uh, Dan, are you ready to give us some of those updates? Let's go ahead and uh, send it over to Dan Jovic here as an update. I've uh, been making some calls and does have some updates on some of the damage and uh, what are you hearing, Dan? All right, Josh, thank you very much for that. I just want to let uh, everybody know we've been making phone calls to the surrounding sheriff's offices and many county officials to find out who is sustaining storm damage due to all of these hurricanes that are blowing through the area. The most serious area, and Josh and Todd have been telling you about it, is in McCurtain County. The emergency management director says there is plenty of damage in the northwest part of the county and multiple damaged homes on the east side of Idabel. They have told us flat out Everyone needs to stay away from the area. That area is not safe right now. It is why you're not seeing our crews out in the field as well, because with these storms blowing through, it's simply not safe for them to broadcast. Once the storms move through, our crews will then move to those areas and then show you specifically how bad things ultimately are. It appears McCurtain County has taken a, a direct hit and the emergency management official has told everyone, again, stay away from there. I've got a phone call into Morris County. The sheriff's office there says they have received many phone calls. Their sheriff's deputies have been dispatched to assist with damage in that area. They would not confirm or deny that injuries have taken place, but Morris County is working many phone calls at this time due to the storm. Thankfully, though, Titus County, no damage is being reported in that area. They say they're willing to assist in the surrounding counties, but they appear to have not taken the brunt of this, Josh. And you said Morris County, they did. They are getting reports of the damage. They are getting reports okay. of damage. Multiple deputies are out to assist with damage in the area, but they would not confirm or deny if anyone has been injured. Gotcha. Yeah, thank you for that update, Dan. Uh, that would be with the same storm that's now moving up into <clears throat> Howard County. Still seeing a little bit of rotation with that one. Uh, and then we'll send it back over to Todd here in just a moment. But you can see there is uh, still some rotation indicated here between Locksville, or Locksburg, and pardon me, Nashville, headed up towards the center point area. Uh, we are far away from the radar here, so it wouldn't be likely that we would still see that kind of debris ball that we did see with the storm earlier. So very well could still have a tornado on the ground here. So uh, this would be crossing Highway 371 at the moment. Looks like it will probably uh, move up towards Center Point and Dirks, and that will likely occur. You can go ahead and put a quick track on that just to give you an idea of uh, when this may be moving over to those locations. But you can see uh, Dirks, they're showing about 846, currently uh, just after 825. So you do have about uh, 15 minutes or so to get ready for that storm in Dirks and then uh, likely over to Center Point just a little bit before that. So maybe uh, about 10 to 15 minutes before that makes its way to Center Point. And uh, before we send it back to Todd here, just wanted to give you an update on the storm in Texarkana. Still seeing uh, the indications of rotation there with the storm in Texarkana, but it is really broadened out. So uh, just looking at it now, not likely that we're seeing anything tornadic there, uh, but a reminder that you are still in that warning and that warning does uh, push all the way up into Arkansas right along I-30 there. So uh, we will continue to keep an eye on that. Before we send it back, just wanted to take a peek at those storms uh, in Rust County, still seeing some indications that we have some rotation there uh, near Minden. That would be Minden, Texas, not Minden, Louisiana. And uh, again, this storm will be headed up towards uh, Tatum 
as well as Beckville. So that's kind of a recap of uh, everything that is going on right now. And you'll notice the storms back to the west. Uh, moving out of the Dallas area, that would be the actual cold front um, that we are watching back to the west. Uh, and the, again, the cold front will eventually catch up to these storms out ahead of it. But we currently don't have any warnings uh, with those storms that are back to the west, uh, moving out of the Canton area and kind of approaching Tyler. So that's a bit of good news for now. And you can see a lot of the damage reports that have popped up as well. Each one of those red icons uh, indicating where we've had uh, reports of any kind of tornado or tornado damage uh, across the region and a uh, number of wind and hail reports back towards Dallas. But so far in the Arkeltex, no reports of damaging uh, straight line winds or hail. But uh, so far, all of our tornado reports this, reports this evening have been tornado reports. So uh, it's just kind of a recap of everything that's going on right now. Todd, are you back over there? I'm over here, Josh. There you go. Let's, uh, let me send it you back over a, to you. You were on a roll, so I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> but we are looking at, uh, you mentioned that storm there in uh, Texarkana. That is the one that recently moved through uh, Hughes Springs, and we have confirmation uh, from uh, fire department rescue reports, uh, significant damage inside the city limits of Hughes Springs. Uh, so it's uh, <clears throat> quite likely that we had a tornado pass very close to Hughes Springs, Texas. Uh, and uh, also, Weather Service also noting that uh, it looks like the front is starting to undercut these storms. That may, may be one reason why we're seeing uh, this storm here uh, over, uh, that's approaching Texarkana uh, weaken somewhat. So that uh, doesn't mean we're out of the woods, but nonetheless, uh, that could be a, a, a sign as to why uh, that we have seen that, at least that storm, a week and some Let's take it back up to the north here. Uh, this is by far the most impressive circulation uh, that we have uh, on the uh, radar right now, as this is crossing out of uh, Sevier County and moving into the uh, central sections of Howard County. Uh, this is a uh, tornado warning. Again, the purple box means con confirmed tornado, and it, this will pass uh, very close to center point and then cross... Uh, uh, 278 here uh, between Dirks and Center Point. So that is where this uh, tornado is going to be going. If you live anywhere from Dirks to Center Point and eventually upstream, uh, up towards this is uh, Daisy, this is Lake Greeson. If you know someone who's there this weekend, let them know that we have a uh, tornado which possibly could impact uh, that part of southwest Arkansas. And again, this is again moving very close to uh, Center Point. And uh, let's take another look and zoom this back out and uh, show you a, a look at the traditional radar uh, with the storms that are moving into the uh, uh, Texarkana area. In fact, you can see the very heavy rain right now in Texarkana. Look at the, uh, the camera there in Texarkana and you can see the uh, uh, heavy rain which is falling. A little, little bit of uh, windy conditions, kind of hard to see the uh, flag out there right now. And it looks like the tree is bouncing pretty good, but uh, very heavy rain right now in the uh, Texarkana area. And uh, you're probably experiencing uh, the worst part of the storms that you will experience here during the night. And uh, give us a, a good half hour or so, maybe a little bit longer, and we should see some improving conditions there uh, in Texarkana. Uh, back to the west, since we have had quite a bit of damage here in McCurtain County, especially in Idabel, you can see that uh, there's really not just a, the worst of the storms have passed. I have a little bit of rain back to the south and west here, uh, southwest of Clarksville. That is going to work your way, your way, work its way your way. But it's kind of doubtful of that uh, in case uh, you, you know, may have uh, some crews out trying to get, say, power to restored. Uh, we still have a little bit of rain out there. Speaking of power, uh, let's give you a look at how these storms are uh, impacting uh, the power issues across the uh, region. And you can see the numbers as I stop this here. This is the button need to stop it. So you can see anywhere there's red, that's where we have at least uh, 5,000 power outages. You can see on the scale here. So let me uh, grab uh, and show you exactly what we're looking at. So 5,500 there in Bowie County. Uh, Cass County is seen quite a bit as well as you can see the number uh, 2,000. Uh, we've had that strong storm that moved through parts 
of Red River County, 3,000, and again, uh, 1,000 in, uh, in uh, McCurtain County. Uh, so we do have numerous power outages across, especially with the storms moving through Texarkana uh, and, and uh, a more populated area, the power outages are uh, beginning to mount. You can really see the, the weather in Texarkana. If you go to the camera right now, we're getting uh, where that circulation's moving through. You get a really good view of just what the wind and rain is like under these storms. Yeah, there you go. You can clearly see the, the wind has picked up. Notice that tree right there. So. Uh, this is the view from the uh, Texarkana New Holland camera there. Uh, this is uh, looking back towards uh, Texas High from our bureau there on Summer Hill Road. And you really can't, this is across the street. You can't see Texas High. That's how hard it's raining there in the uh, uh, Texarkana area. And, and Josh, you may want to keep an eye on that, uh, the observation station at the airport there. Yeah, I will. If, you see, if they may mention it too, uh, as far as any gusts that we get from the airport because that's going to be an indication as we'll probably see uh, as Josh has alluded to or alluded to earlier uh, straight line winds become more of an issue with this activity uh, as it progresses its way uh, across the uh, rest of the region we can see lots of lightning uh, very heavy rain right now in Texarkana in fact let me uh, turn off the power uh, outage numbers and uh, show you the radar here and kind of give you a sense on what we're looking at. So again, we have the strongest part of the storms right now in uh, Texarkana. Uh, we do have a tornado warning that is currently in place, uh, but it's kind of hard to say. I really don't see anything uh, that's really uh, left to indicate anything uh, too pressing as far as any uh, tornado activity. So uh, based on that trend, it's kind of doubtful that we'll see that extended uh, further to the north and west. Uh, we do have a couple of rotations worth watching here uh, in Cass County, but nothing uh, present uh, or at least too pressing at the present time. And you can see further to the south, uh, no warnings currently in place. But this is the cell here, uh, which is uh, now north northeast of uh, Minden, Texas, which is uh, going to uh, move up towards Beckville and maybe uh, up towards Tatum, between Tatum and Beckville is where we will see this and probably move closer uh, to Beckville than to Tatum as it, uh, uh, again, moving towards the northeast. All these about 40, 45 miles per hour has been the speed at which they have been moving. And that, uh, that motion is likely going to uh, continue in terms of the speed. So if this were to continue that speed, and uh, let's say that it were uh, to pose, continue to pose a threat of tornadic activity, let's go ahead and uh, kind of give you a sense on when it's going to uh, threaten certain areas. So that looks like it's about 20 minutes away from, uh, from Beckville. Uh, so that puts it about 9 o'clock from that part of Cass County. If it continues that uh, progress, we'll see it across uh, very close to Scottsville here uh, a little bit uh, before, actually 9.30 is when that could move into the Scottsville area. And let me clean this off and zoom it out, zoom out some more, and uh, we'll be able to look further into uh, Northwest Louisiana. So uh, we'll see when this is going to be arriving here. It's been over the last couple of days. It looked like 10, 11 o'clock is when we would see things begin to impact uh, Shreveport and Bossier City. So we said an hour from here, uh, it could cross uh, the Red River between Hostin and Plain Dealing. Uh, is what it looks like if, if the motion continues, and that's what uh, a little bit more than an hour and a half, so that would be about 10 o'clock, uh, and then it uh, would eventually move up towards Magnolia, but we're talking a couple of hours before, and again, that's given the time of the evening, it's doubtful that this will still be uh, as strong as it is now by the time it gets up here, uh, but uh, still that's the path that this could take, and if we have any uh, tornadic issues, uh, in northwest Louisiana, this probably, more than likely, uh, will be the cause of it. Uh, so, uh, but it really does look like uh, that we could be looking at the, the wind from this line becoming more of an issue. And in fact, let me uh, take this uh, off, and I'm going to talk more about that cell in that, that possible tornado in Howard County here in a second. But I want to kind of project things forward here an hour, because this is going to take things uh, uh, closer to 10 o'clock. So again, this is uh, FutureScan moving their radar forward an hour. So we'll start to see 
Again, the rain get closer to Shreveport between 9, 30, and 10, and we probably will see sometime between 10, 11 o'clock uh, the thunderstorms increase in Shreveport and Bossier City. Again, ex Texarkana experiencing more than likely the worst that you're going to get right now, and you will see conditions improve here uh, during the next, uh, say, half hour to an hour. You should start to see uh, conditions improve more rapidly in your uh, part of the uh, Arklatex. As far as rainfall, haven't touched on that very much. Let's give you a look at uh, uh, the rainfall aspect of things. And uh, we have seen, uh, again, the heaviest rain over the northwestern sections of the area where we anticipated that it would fall. And you can see these swaths of yellow. That's where uh, the radar has picked up, uh, picking up a, a good two plus inches of rainfall. And the chances of seeing those am amounts of rain will be highest here in northeast Texas, southeast Oklahoma, as well as uh, parts of southwest Arkansas, although uh, farther to the east, you probably will not get as much. And you can see that uh, light green is a half an inch, the darker greens are an inch. So we're going to pick up a quick inch, half an inch to an inch with, these line, with this line as it moves into the area. All right, let's go back uh, to the radar and give you a, another update on the uh, two areas which are rotating right now across the Arklatex. And uh, this one, we still have a tornado warning that is currently in place. Let's see if we can uh, take a look at the velocity scan of the radar and show you exactly uh, where we're looking at. This is the uh, storm right in here. It looks like it has crossed uh, Highway 278, I believe that is, uh, there uh, be between Center Point and Dirks. So Dirks, it looks like the, the, uh, the tornado here has crossed to your south, uh, closer to center point. It is going to eventually, as you can see here, here's Lake Greeson uh, there in Pike County. Uh, we will see this uh, move out of Howard County and move up towards uh, Lake Greeson. I believe uh, Daisy is, uh, State Park is up in this particular part of, uh, of uh, Pike County there along uh, Lake, Lake Greeson. So that especially the southern half of the lake could be impacted with that. That's outside of our viewing area, but I figured I'd, in case you know someone who is at the lake, uh, may want to let them know that this is uh, coming uh, to their particular part of the uh, area. Uh, so that's what's left of that particular cell. Again, uh, notice that we do not have any more warnings for the line. I, just take that back. We just, just had a severe thunderstorm warning, which is encouraging, but still, not a tornado warning. So we're seeing this more than likely evolve into a, a, a damaging straight-line wind threat. And this could be, uh, you know, we could be looking at uh, winds here uh, that uh, could gust upwards of uh, 60, 70 miles per hour as they move uh, further to the east. And this is going to track uh, through Louisville, uh, northern Miller County, Hope, Prescott, Roston, uh, wind probably going to be the biggest concern. Don't think we'll see much as far as hail. That's one thing we really haven't looked at uh, very much uh, recently. Let's go back to the uh, radar here. You can see the progress of uh, this line. You can kind of see a little bit of uh, bowing here, so that could be a sign that we could see uh, you know, the, the wind in intensify as that line continues to accelerate towards the north and west. And keep in mind, as this becomes more of a line, that we still could have uh, little uh, notches that form where we start to see a little bit of spin. That's something that we're going to watch <clears throat> a little bit closer here as it looks like our, uh, this is becoming more of a line as opposed to the, the uh, discrete cells that we were watching earlier. So that is the latest warning that has been issued, a severe thunderstorm warning. Again, that warning is in effect until, I believe, 9.30 uh, there for Miller, Lafayette, Northern Columbia, uh, Nevada, and the southern half of uh, Hempstead County is where that uh, severe thunderstorm warning is currently in place. Looking at the thunderstorms moving into Atlanta, uh, you are barely in that warning, so you're probably looking at uh, the potential for some gusty winds, which could cause some issues there in Atlanta, Texas. Uh, notice no warnings further to the south. Uh, you can see in Marshall, we have seen the rain associated with the storms that we were watching to our south that are now making their way into the uh, Marshall, Texas area. Let's take a quick peek at uh, the camera there in uh, downtown Marshall. 
uh, since the rain is moving and see how conditions are uh, being impacted there. Uh, and you can see there is a flag here on the uh, courthouse. Doesn't look like I can see too much motion with it and we still have decent visibility. So it is raining in Marshall and a little bit of lightning as you can see here, but not as windy definitely and the rain not as heavy yet as it was earlier uh, there in the uh, Texarkana area. So uh, Marshall, you're just starting with the heavier rains and he's got plenty of that uh, down to the south. You can see what's left of uh, one of our two tornado warnings. This is the cell which is now, uh, that is, uh, as we mentioned, moving towards Beckville. So let me uh, stop the radar and kind of give a, a sense on exactly the location of our possible tornado here. So again, I say possible because it hasn't been confirmed. Let me try to zero in, make sure I click the right product here. There we go. So you can kind of see our, our cylinder. Again, these have been popping up and usually shortly thereafter we get some confirmation of uh, some uh, issues because of uh, what very well could have been a tornado. And you can see, you gotta zoom in close here, right in our cylinder, try to zoom right down. You can kind of see uh, the uh, county line road. Unfortunately, it's right over the, uh, the rotation there, but uh, let's try to get some uh, uh, roads to pop in further down downstream. Doesn't look like uh, the radar is gonna cooperate, but uh, this is gonna come very close to uh, Beckville also close to uh, Arbor. Uh, so this is probably of the rotations that we have, the strongest that we have uh, right now. And just and moving- I believe we see some debris with that one now. You do? It does line up with where the circulation is on velocity there. So uh, maybe just the beginning of a debris ball that uh, would, might want to oh, take yeah. a look at that. Yeah, yeah there you go. So <clears throat> and again, what we look for here is, I showed you the rotation. You might recall how it was uh, right within the cylinder, and now we have uh, this showing up very close to that rotation. So that could be uh, a confirmation. We very well could see this red box change over to purple. And uh, you folks in Beckville, uh, in this part of uh, uh, Panola County, keep an eye on this, as this very well could move into your area. And, and let me go ahead and, and move this. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna see it too well here. We can kind of see in the last couple of scans there that this is going to come uh, very close to Beckville. And just to kind of give a sense on timing again, again, moving northeast at 45, assuming it's right there. Uh, quick math here in my head. So, gosh, it's getting too late. Uh, 45, so let's say that uh, we're looking at about uh, 10 minutes or so. We'll see it move into the uh, Beckville area. So uh, just a few minutes. It's not very far away. It'll arrive in Beckville and then uh, continue to slide its way uh, up uh, towards southern uh, Harrison County, uh, eventually uh, here into the eastern sections of Harrison County. And as I mentioned, northern Caddo Parish and northern Bossier Parish could be in play with this uh, possible tornado. Again, this uh, not confirmed yet as far as debris, but it, it does match up with the um, with the what we're seeing there with with the uh, rotation aspect of things as well uh, in terms of uh, matching up with where the spin is in the uh, in the atmosphere, and that is probably the strongest of the rotations that we have across the area. Let's go back uh, and show you the velocity with the storm. Uh, that we've been watching here it, that has moved across. Uh, again, this is the one that passed very close to New Boston and then moved across uh, Little River County and it is now, uh, looks like it's moving out of uh, Howard County and is moving into uh, the heart of uh, Pike County and uh, should pass fairly close to Lake Greeson. So it looks like this threat, as far as that, that uh, rotating storm, is uh, ending for uh, for Howard County. And as far as that part of the Arklatex goes, uh, you do have some heavy rain right now in Nashville, but uh, again, maybe some gusty winds, but it uh, uh, doesn't look like it's going to pose too much of uh, a severe weather threat for uh, Nashville. Ashdown's been getting uh, some he uh, heavy rain. You got one more band to move in and through, and then you're pretty much done. You can see not much left to the west. You can see in Texarkana, we do have the heavy rain, which continues to move through severe thunderstorm warning uh, for 
this part of the line here, which is uh, going to impact Hope. Hope, Prescott, uh, Ralston, Willisville, uh, uh, Louisville, uh, Stamps, all locations that could see wind gusts upwards of 60 to 70 miles per hour uh, with this cluster of thunderstorms uh, that uh, is moving uh, east uh, across southwest Arkansas. Uh, heavy rain right now extends from uh, Queen City, Atlanta, down towards uh, Jefferson, and uh, uh, also some heavy rain in Marshall. But notice we don't have any boxes on this part of the line, so this is more than likely below uh, severe limits, just some decent rain. So it looks like uh, Jefferson, even Marshall, Longview, Gilmer, uh, even though Gilmer had some uh, strong storms earlier, uh, pretty much uh, dodging the bullet from the worst of this uh, activity as we speak. So we have uh, two areas of concern right now. We have uh, this cluster of storms, which is producing a straight line wind threat. That's going to impact southwest Arkansas. And then we have this line of storms, most of it in East Texas not severe, but at the bottom of it we do have uh, this rotating storm uh, which is uh, just now moving uh, into uh, parts of uh, Cass, uh, I should say Panola County, and is going to pass very close to the uh, Beckville area here fairly shortly as it moves towards the north and east. Have to keep an eye on this, the, uh, the activity uh, back down to the south as well. You can see another storm that has developed uh, south of uh, Rusk there in Cherokee County. Uh, that is uh, the configuration of this uh, is worth watching. This could, be, uh, this could be a cell that if it continues to get going, uh, just, to, just to make a point here, here's Shreveport. This could be the one that impacts us if it were to manage to continue to strengthen and maybe develop into. Now, the, the thing that may happen is we have this line that's going to be rushing in. That could save us. Uh, so uh, the, the chances of that getting here before the line catches it uh, looks to be uh, promising that we and, will. Uh, it looks like the gust within the line in Texarkana, the gust was about 50. So 50. severe thunderstorm would be once you get up to 60. So yeah. we had about 50. We'll still do some damage. But it uh, looks like the winds there with the storms uh, in the severe thunderstorm morning, probably somewhere between 40 and 60 miles an hour. All right. Thanks, Josh, for that update. So 50 confirmed with this line up here, <coughs> excuse me, to the north. That is uh, uh, moving, especially the strongest part of this, near and south of uh, Interstate 30 there in southwest Arkansas is where uh, that's going to be too, uh, a, a bit of an issue. Uh, but again, uh, we have this rotating storm here, probably the only one left, and it looks like the tornado warning has expired with that. And so we are now tornado warning free. So with that being said... Just want to might want to clear some of those areas back to the west. We know there's a, we have some of our reporters are headed out now that the uh, danger yeah. has subsided west of Texarkana, so we know they'll be stopping in Clarksville, uh, maybe the New Boston area to check in on some of the damage there, and then head over to McCurtain County. Understandably, I know a lot of folks probably heading out to help out with storm cleanup. Uh, the danger, at least the threat of severe weather, yes. is over in McCurtain uh, County. Still have some rain, some storms that may come through Red River County, uh, but right now it looks like any any danger danger there has pretty much come to an end. And, and, and Josh, I was going to mention for everyone watching the back, we're getting close to 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll stay on board here uh, until 9, and then we'll uh, kind of go to uh, normal since we're now tornado warning free. Uh, for the most part, uh, we will uh, go to the normal Fox broadcast at 9, uh, and, uh, but we'll stay on the air here until we get to that point. Uh, and then uh, we'll continue everything over on Fox.